How y'all doing? Well, we've gone over bill of materials, two schematics, how to test your power transformer, soldering practices, and a couple other things. Well, there's our chassis. It's a, a little bit different than what uh, I talked about, but it's a new one. It's a little thicker, which is okay. It's about three inches by, uh, I'd say, 14 by 8 by 3. It's thick. So anyway, we will, I went ahead and jumped ahead a little bit and cut out the transformer hole and the hole for the uh, AC input, which is just this, uh, what they call a IEC line cord, the type your computer uses. It just drops right in there. The trick on this today I use is a Dremel with a cutoff wheel and pretty much scribed it out first. I'll go over that real quick uh, with the calipers, my favorite scribing tool. Basically what I did is, uh, I don't really care what the numbers are saying, even though these Harbor Freights will lose their zero, so you got to watch them. First I measured this and then figured out where I wanted it. So I know my thickness it came out to be a little over an inch. So I figured, okay, I'm going to start right here. So I just plowed that thing right in on the center, drew one line, and it's over here towards the side. You want to keep all your AC power as far over to the side as possible. And then I added pretty much just by opening the calipers and referencing to the side of the box and the other side and scribe my other line. And then did the same thing with the thickness, set my thickness, and in this case I just used that to go up, scribe my first line, added the difference, scribe my second line, and then just dremeled to those lines. I transfer drilled both holes just with a sharpie. Just went ahead and went in there like that and went ahead and drilled them through and so now that's done. Also, using the same center line as these mounting holes for the AC input plug, I went ahead and just drew a line over and then this is my fuse hole. And over here, two more scribe lines. We're gonna run a 8 ohm and a 4 ohm switch because our output transformer can do both. 4 ohms gives a little bit more of a dirtier sound. 8 ohms is a clean sound. So we'll have that switch here. Also, we'll have our output jack knotted over here. With the transformer, it was a little bit, oops, there was a little bit different, uh, basically the same way of describing out, but I actually uh, had an old hole from this transformer, another chassis, and just transferred that on here, but it's the same thing. Measure the width, the thickness, uh, you want to get it as far over in the corner as you can. So, put a little paint on it and it's ready to go. Um, so now what I was going to talk to you about real quick is where to place the tubes now. The rectifier tube sees a lot of AC. So we'll keep it over here in this noisy AC part of the chassis. And uh, the preamp tube we'll put over here towards our sensitive signal part. Now, this is the area where you don't want to mix too much the AC and the uh, audio signal, especially the input. And this will over here be the where the power tube sits. I got two little dots, and hopefully I'll be able to punch those uh, during the video, and I'll show you how quick it goes. As far as the front panel goes, here's a typical volume potentiometer. It's got a little tab on it. Some people like to drill a hole and keep it from spinning. I just kind of bend it out of the way and be done with it. Now you don't want to get them up too close to the top because the knobs are going to point over the top, you know. I'm going to actually pull them down a little bit below center, somewhere about uh, typical about an inch off the bottom. 
And on these, there's a minimum spacing for knob clearance between the pots. I like to use about an inch and three eighths between. So we'll get our trusty calipers again, check the zero there, zeroed. And uh, I guess we'll get an idea of where we want them to be. I figured it'd be about an inch. And uh, it is, comes out to be a, an inch. So, just draw a real light line going all the way down. Now there's uh, gonna be a power switch. Pilot light, a standby switch, which will turn the AC, the DC on and off, the high voltage. It's good to start the filaments first and then turn the high voltage on after about a minute. So, since our audio signal is going to be over here on this side and our AC control is going to be over here, usually you run these switches together. And they'll be mounted something like this, right side by side each other. And the, uh, the nice little pilot light will be right next to it. And then the potentiometers will be here. I think I'm going to go ahead and run the four potentiometers. Uh, that'll be uh, the treble control, uh, master volume, pre-volume, and then uh, a mode switch, which will give me a couple different sounds. And this is an option that I wouldn't recommend for the first time builder, but it certainly is available to add on uh, in the future. And since the box is fairly large for this project, we're going to have a lot of room. So let's get started punching these. Uh, I guess we can start with the, the fuse holder. And uh, so I'm going to use just a step bit. Uh, it works great for sheet metal. Sometimes I'll use a little bit of WD-40, but we'll go ahead and get started now. Oh, before I do that, go ahead and get our trusty calipers again and find that fuse holder. Here it is. It's actually, a lot of my stuff is recycled. So we know where it's going to be. i got a pilot hole already. And, uh, okay, so that's going to be about a half inch. Go ahead and measure down here. Find your half inch it's going to be about looks like three steps from the top so let's get busy let's double check that real quick Actually, I'm not going to use this wire I'll just cut it off okay so there we go Got some birds on the inside, but we'll take care of those. So that's our fuse. We're going to need to have a switch and an output jack. In the output jack, there's two different jacks here that I specified. One's grounding. It's actually going to stay grounded unless you put your plug inside. That'll be the input. The output doesn't need to be grounded. It's going to be in the back. This is the back. You always want your power transformer usually away in the corner right next to the power input and fuse. So we're going to be on the audio side, in this case the left side. And since it's the back, that's where we're going to put our switch and our fuse holder. So usually I'll just take a little quick sharpie. I already have my scribe line, so I have the same level. So it's going to look good. I'll say we'll go about right here for the switch. And we'll go about right here for the output. So let's get busy. Start off with a pilot drill. You can get a tiny little thin one, that way it won't dance around too much. This aluminum box is pretty thin. It's a little on the thinner side than I like. I don't know if you've been listening to this music I've been playing in the background. It's uh, off YouTube. Go ahead and type in Swamp Slide and it's under playlists. You'll hear some pretty cool stuff. I love these stubby drills. You ever get an extra 60 bucks, buy a set of stubbies. They do not flex, they're very safe. 
and they tend to last a long time. You'll never break one. Okay, so I'll get these holes started since I got the drill in my hand. Okay, now let's see, what are we doing? Uh, we are going to drill for a switch. So we'll go ahead and just measure the diameter of that, match it up to the step size. Okay, so it says it's 0.45 and the step on the drill just so I get an idea so I know when to stop. Okay, that's about halfway down the drill. There you go. Always recommend Milwaukee Power Tools because they got a ton of torque. Yeah, you can see what happens with that torque. Okay, that'll fit perfectly. Now we have an output jack. They're a little bit smaller. Diameter wise, uh, check our zero. It's off already. Good old Harbor Freight. Uh, says three point point three seven. So you don't have to do this. You can always just recheck and recheck and recheck. And that's gonna be. It uh, looks like about three to four down. Usually I like using a little WD-40 during this step. It keeps it from sticking. Okay, so that's going to be a little tight, but that's all right. So there we go. Nice and straight. Very professional, if that matters to you. Get ahead on this. Here's some of these shavings. I like to try and work as clean as I can with these shavings. We talked about our tube placement. 5Y3, 6V6, and the preamp tube, the 6SL7. I'll show you the sockets I got for pretty cheap from Antique Radio Supply. I haven't used these before, but they're, they're pretty nice, all ceramic. Brand new, though so I've been known to uh, recycle quite a bit of stuff. In this case, we'll go with some brand new sockets. Now this supposedly takes a one inch hole and these will mount on the top and sure enough 0.96 so one inch punch will work really good. Okay, here we are with a quarter horsepower Milwaukee pawn shop, $65. The batteries lasted me 10 years. I use it quite a bit so you can see I'm cheating here and one inch hole. And I'm going to leave the sheet metal piece inside because it's, these newer boxes are so thin it doesn't really change the performance. they pop out pretty well when you're done. So. So you just use the drill to do everything. Looks like they want to come out. Sometimes they're a little sticky. In this case, they want to cooperate. Okay. Trying to do this for the most part. I don't want to get my finger stuck underneath that thing. That wouldn't be very fun. Okay, three tube holes that fast. Here we go. Antique radio got these nice little ceramic sockets, all in tissue paper. So, uh, move around a little bit they got a gap I'll have to center them and get rid of that gap uh, right now I have the pin going over to the left on all of these that's fine I typically like to have the pin headed towards the back actually or the front but just align vertically so there we go in order to get these all straight we use the calipers again and right now I'm going to go ahead and just measure over where these look to be centered and uh, 
take these out and scribe me a line. Same on this one. Scribe me a line right about in the center. And I know that'll keep my screws, my holes lined up, make it look uh, nice and straight and professional, if that matters. Okay, I got my marks. Now I can just put these guys in again, and then just, uh, they even have an oval hole, so you don't have to be perfect. I don't really need to scribe the line this way, because I can just, what we call transfer drill, take my Sharpie and just mark it on that line. And then I go in with my small pilot hole drill and uh, follow it up with about an eighth inch hole or whatever hardware I want to use. I'll probably use 440 or 632. So on the front panel, let's discuss that a little bit more. And uh, next time you see me, uh, all the holes will be drilled. So, and then we'll be able to uh, start test fitting. Now, obviously this is where we've decided to make things happen. It's really not gonna be that easy to change things. Something you wanna think about is the ergonomics. The front panel, you know, I got a front panel finish, I'll be honest, uh, I love front panels. We're gonna end up putting some nice gold vinyl on this. This is, uh, the vinyl's so thin, it's a metallic uh, vinyl. It'll show almost every scratch underneath it, so I may want to prepare the surface, but we'll do that at the very final step after the amp is completely fine-tuned, biased, and everything. We'll go ahead and pop everything through, just kind of let it hang by the wires, and uh, do a fine sand on this with a little bit of water, kind of get it all polished up, then just put the vinyl down and follow it up with some, uh, some labeling off a plain old label, label maker, and it'll look pretty good. It'll look professional, I guarantee you. So, that's it right now. You can see how simple it is. It's really no worries, you know. I just don't like doing sheet metal. I don't like to drummel and grind and make a lot of dust and stuff though, but that's how in this case I did this. If it was a thicker metal box, I would have got out my jigsaw. But, uh, uh, you know, it's a little tough. Uh, you can also use what's called a nibbler. And these are really neat. It's got just a tiny little little thing here that pulls down. It's a little blade and uh, it takes, takes tiny little bites, but you can make some pretty precision work with it. Um, that's about all we got right now. Uh, I'll talk to you soon with a finished box.